Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max, and I'm joined by Flynn, and our special guest, Flynn, has returned today. So, Howdy. Hey, Flynn, how you going? Down, right? How about you guys? Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. All right, well, uh, let's start it off, eh? Yeah. So there's a pretty big incident over the past couple of weeks. Deep fake stuff. It's been an issue for quite some time now. The biggest issue we had seen was kind of, you know, celebrities being used in nefarious ways, X-rated content, but... Something that happened recently was a firm in Hong Kong, an employee was in a call with the CFO and what they thought was other company employees, and they actually sent $25 million to a malicious actor. Uh, This is something we've been kind of saying is on the horizon for a while. I actually thought it would have been probably a year or two away from it, Yeah, Um, but goes to show how quickly these threats are starting to evolve. 100%. 100%. I mean, it's it's an interesting one. We uh, I feel like we definitely said something like this would happen. I feel like we predicted it. Yeah, I think our prediction was more based around politics, which yeah. uh, I think this does open a can of worms, especially because people are seeing this uh, and also the celebrities, as we said. I think this is absolutely going to be a problem with the upcoming election in America. Yep. Uh, Australia, not as much because there's not as much buzz, let's be honest. Yep. Uh, you know, Trump and Biden is such a worldwide event i suppose is such a spectacle yep as, as bad that. as that sounds <laughs> uh and i can guarantee you there is going to be more than one deep fake video that comes out how obvious it is right. we'll see uh i assume there's going to be a lot of over the top ones there already is yeah but who knows maybe someone makes one that's just walks that line between crazy but also believable Real? yeah i mean you could say that one thing people could be trying to obviously trying to make you know trump or biden look like an idiot but on the other hand they could also make deep fakes to make them look better really yeah i mean probably wouldn't be hard with some of them no probably (laughs) not probably not but you know it it extends further to than just politics anyone who's got a big area in the in the public sphere so celebrities or yeah politicians as well but People who have a big influence, you can see that they're, you know, not only going to be, there's going to be better deep fakes of them. We all know the Tom Cruise one. That's going to be a, a relic soon. But also maybe uh, maybe adult content being released of, uh, of celebrities that may not want it. Yeah, Taylor Swift was the big one recently where that went viral. Um, exactly. And I'm sure it probably happens every day. There's probably some bad parts of the internet where this goes on. Yeah. Very scary stuff, you know, especially with the current climate of the world. You know, imagine a world leader says one thing and then old mate over in other country goes, hold on, he can't say that. And uh, yeah, they go to war, especially. Exactly. Like this. Yeah. I feel like this could be a bit of a warning too for us everyday people. I mean, currently it's being used against bigger fish, but uh, shouldn't be too long now until it's being used against everybody. Yeah, it's an easy it's an easy way to try and make a scam happen, really. If you could try, if you could try and scale it out, to have you know people who are less important but make it happen to heaps and heaps of these people then you know it seems like it could be a scam machine oh of course and like you know you can just imagine how terrible it could get like imagine you get a video of your child and it's a hostage situation it's not real at all but that's enough to set in panic yeah and enough definitely enough for someone to send over money yeah or anything along those lines so the process is made easier and easier than you know automated you know, it's not going to be automated email scams that'll be anymore. It could be automated uh, hostage scams based on your Instagram posts if you have children in the posts with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, keep your kids off of uh, social media. That's a big thing. God's sake. And keep yourself off of expletive TikTok as well. <laughs> I mean, that's it's a bit ironic we saying that when we have a podcast, but, you know, something to keep yourself protected. If you're really paranoid at the moment, you can go to anything that's going to transfer money and uh, basically just say them, hey, I don't give you permission to ever transfer money based off of my voice to authenticate. Yep. Because that is something that banks were using at some point. Not currently, as far as I'm aware. Probably still is the case with some of them. Yep. Uh, But there's also the tried and true ways, like we said, I think we said in an earlier episode where this would become a, a thing using passphrases that only people would know, setting up multi-factor authentication, not in your traditional sense like uh, authenticator apps in a sense of, uh, you know, if Max 
is saying like, hey, I really in a, in this spot, I need a hundred bucks. I'll call him on his phone yeah. to verify, hey, is this actually you? Yeah. And yeah, that's just a tried and true way that's going to be effective, but even that's going to be worse in the future. And, you know, certain people are going to be very sophisticated. Yeah. Let's take it back to the, the scam that happened. Over, how much was it again? It was uh, 200 million Hong Kong dollars, which is 25 million uh, USD, I believe. Yeah. And for those who haven't heard about it, it happened where an attacker was able to deep fake a room full of board members in an online call and convince a client to transfer money into a illegitimate account which belonged to them, obviously. So they closed out a business deal pretending to be other people <laughs> using uh, deep fake technology. So, And this supposedly went on for a week as well before they realized that something was up and got in contact with the um, with the branch responsible for making the transfer. Yeah, it's interesting that they didn't catch it out. Obviously, there were some back and forth communications happening. Yeah, there's also tried and true processes within businesses that would have helped with this. Yeah. You know, verifying bank accounts is obviously a tried and true way. Yeah. No, I think there's there's probably a few ways where you can sort of independently check whether you're um whether you're talking to a legitimate representative of a comp of a company or a you know a scammer. Good thing is to obviously independently check that. Go to their website. Make sure that you're talking to the right email that's posted, you know, directly on their website rather than a, a slightly dodgy one. Always pays to just double check. Yeah, so in war news with deep fake, not particularly deep fake, but AI video technology, yep. Sora was announced uh, this week or early last week. Basically, for any of our viewers that aren't tuned into the AI sphere, it's basically ChatGPT's text to video uh, right now. I don't think it's available to the public. No, I don't think so. Uh, but from what we've seen of it, it's actually extremely effective. It struggles with certain things that AI always has. Like I think appendages are probably still not great. I was looking at a video of that. It was one of their exemplary videos, but it was a video, a video of a woman walking down a street. And I was looking at the background and her legs were perfect. Like really? And it was actually quite astounding how good the background was too. So doing pretty well. I mean, obviously there's going to be problems here and there, but yeah, it's, um, from the examples I've seen, it was pretty good as well. Um, some I saw, it did occasionally morph with the background. Yeah, that's all. Uh, by appendages, by the way. Appendages was incorrect wording, I suppose. It's the word phalanges, toes and fingers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> limbs. Yeah, yeah small limbs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Flynn, what does this sort of... Is this a new, a big jump, a leap in AI, or is this just sort of on the due course, do you think? I'm interested on your opinion. <laughs> I think it's on the due course. I mean, yeah. there's, there's really, I don't think there's any limit to what sort of content AI can generate, yeah. um, especially when you, when you start layering multiple AI models together. I don't know how this works. I don't know if it's image generation put on top of each other to create each frame in the video or if it's actually um, generating video straight from... Um, the neural network, I guess, like like kind of like a video version of stable diffusion. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I haven't, I haven't properly explored how it works, and I'm very interested to. But um, it's definitely on the juke course. I mean, like at some point we're going to get 3D modeling AI, yeah. and all, this, all this crazy stuff, and probably not too far away. There is some some very basic 3D modeling AI. Yeah. In there. But I believe I believe the way that functions, and this is due to the limitations of training data. I mean, but the way it functions is just three different uh, uh, image generators put for each dimension of the three D model sort of thing. I think that's how it works. Right, and then it does some stitching to make it all work together. So if you think of like a slice, in a, if you think of a sphere, and you take a slice out of the sphere. Yeah. And you put an image there, and then you keep doing that, overlaying it. Yeah, that, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think at some point we'll probably be seeing uh, AI that legitimately does generate three D models from the neural network. And anyway. yeah, there's no there's no limits really in terms of like if you think content AI will be able to do it one day, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. One thing that I find interesting as well is when this will be available to the public because uh, Flynn and I were discussing it beforehand. This is got to take a lot of processing power 
That's you to um to yeah. be able to develop a video like that with AI. Um, I don't know maybe they have a really exclusive plan, like only enterprise level agreements can use it. And who knows? But I mean, every single time we think AI is going to slow down a bit, and then it never does. So no, exactly. You know, it, it's it's not slowing down as we uh, as we say every week. <laughs> No, yeah, it's it's pretty scary. One thing that I'm I suppose is maybe endearing is that I'm seeing a lot of people not in the tech sphere voicing their concerns for this. Mm. Um because I think it's a certain thing where not a lot of people can see the benefit versus the negative impact that this could have. You know, there is the cool aspect of oh, I can go create a video, but mm. you know, there's also the worry that people have as taking away people's, you know, creative liberty when they're making animation and storytelling no i've definitely seen that as well where it's yeah you see people you know normally it's such a niche sort of topic like ai cyber security and the voices that are speaking out are usually big ones who are in technology like you said but this one you know you talk to every second person and they're, they're they've heard of it or you know have some recollection or some knowledge of the of the, the ai videos going around yeah, I mean, imagine a video came out of you doing something and it's not you at all. Be terrifying. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, video used to be the gold standard of like evidence. Once, once image generation came in, you know, you couldn't trust images anymore, and now, now there's the potential that you won't be able to trust videos soon. Yeah. But how long until you won't be able to trust someone in front of you? That's a scary thing. Yeah. No, I'm waiting for a a court case where someone is has been claimed to have been at a certain place from a still image that looks like them and then they create a, a video alibi, right? <laughs> Timestamps and everything that looks legit. It looks like there's a video recording of them at a different place at the same time, uh, try and get them out of out of trouble. Or on the inverse, you know, people could make it to try and get people into trouble. Mm, I suppose maybe uh, digital forensics will be a big area soon. Being yeah. able to cross-reference and, you know, I suppose... Yeah, verify that videos are legitimate. Exactly. No, definitely. And, and I feel like forensics, it's always sort of been a bit of a niche area. I like to see it a bit more in the mainstream. I feel like a lot of people know about digital forensics in the cybersecurity community, know a little bit about it, but you know, there's not very much interest to go into it. It doesn't, people don't think it pays very well. It might, it might not, but there's not a lot of knowledge behind it. So you know, it's also a very difficult thing to do. And yeah. Yeah, we've seen that in the text. The like chat GPT, it's hard to recognize what's chat GPT or what's not. Yeah, mm. no, exactly. Well, I assume this would be based off of you know checksums, hashes, and stuff like that. Being able to verify, I don't know what's CCTV and what's um, something that's been generated. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. But that's coming from someone who doesn't know too much about it. Yeah, I think digital forensics is going to be limited in its ability to recognize what's AI and what's not in the future for sure. Well, there's, there's algorithms and stuff that you can do to, to go through. And like, for example, you can kind of, as a human, when you look at something that's written by ChatGPT, you can kind of tell, right? Yeah. And you can get tools that also kind of can tell. Yeah. To, right, to right. varying varying levels of success, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's not too much of an extension to think that people are going to have an eye or a keen eye at the moment for AI video or develop some tools that look for indicators that it might not be real. But at the same time, with yeah. text gener like with ChatGPT and text generation um, models, the accuracy was never that high. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the accuracy is that high for humans either. Like no. as much as you can recognize which blog articles are generated by ChatGPT, I think there's going to be a lot of circumstances where you've read AI generated work and been and you don't recognize that it's AI. Yeah. So I, it's it's really worrying in these in these like very important circumstances like in a courtroom mm. and in well mainly in a courtroom um where you need high accuracy and you're just not going to have it yeah but that that's the what i was thinking with uh with the court example is maybe you can look at the metadata as you're seeing two videos and they're indistinguishable maybe you can look at the metadata and you'll be able to tell from dates and stuff like that but even that's going to be difficult if somebody's really on top of you know, either their alibi or you know, mm. putting blame on somebody. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a shit show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it seems like accountability is something that's not being brought up that often. 
do companies that are producing AI have accountability to be able to put keys or certain things in their videos that are able to determine that it's that it's not yeah that's that's what i was trying to sort of get out with the metadata thing you know i don't even know if it is possible but maybe open ai can put something within sora that makes it very clear if you're looking at a file that it's has been generated by sora um but i assume there's going to be bypasses even if that was the case um but what's what's that crypt- cryptography term Sten- stenol Steganography. Steganography. But I, I don't know if that's too relevant because that's based yeah, off lines. It's like, because that's that's like hiding stuff. Yeah, in, hiding in, data in the image. Like yeah. Light. So what if, what if... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you are right. What if OpenAI were able to embed a, you know, invisible to the human eye, but in, embed a key or a pattern in a video that's able to make it, you know... Or just within the hash or something. Yeah, to, to give it away. Like, the, the trick with... OpenAI is that, sorry, ChatGPT is that when you make it write some wording for you, you know, you can change it a little bit, change it up, edit the wording, switch out a few words, and that completely ruins the detectors for if it's human or AI, because realistically, you've just kind of taken out all the indicators that it's an AI. For an AI video, unless you're going to go in and manually edit parts of the video, it becomes a lot more difficult to do that. Yeah, don't think it's an easy solution, but I think that is somewhere on the right path of what we we are trying yeah. to say. I think so, but then is OpenAI gonna do that? Exactly. That's that's yeah. the whole point. Uh, do they care enough? Really? Probably yeah. not. You would think it'd be a simple solution, but who knows? In ways, yeah. So uh, in the news, law enforcement actually got a managed to get a hold of uh, Lockbit's infrastructure. And they actually managed to take down a significant chunk of a. Uh, Lockbit's infrastructure. Uh, this was on February 19th, I believe. This is actually pretty exciting news because uh, law enforcement usually it's very can't get a hold of ransomware gangs and stuff. I'm pretty sure Lockbit's not going to go anywhere, really. They'll no. probably be coming back. Um, they may have already been back. They have said that they updated the PHP server and they would reward anyone that finds a vulnerability in the latest version. So this is this is something we discussed with Cool and actually how it's hilarious that uh, companies are so behind on their cybersecurity, but uh, ransomware gangs are hiring pen testers yeah, to they're... find vulnerabilities in their service. Yeah, doing a pretty much a bug bounty on their on yeah, their ransomware. That's pretty funny, um, but you know it's good to see that law enforcement is doing something to try and stop ransomware gangs. Um, that being said, we all know that. Yeah. Probably just going to pivot, go somewhere else. Exactly. Um, it's not going to stop them for too long. But good to see that they are doing so, um, stuff to stop them. I think it was the FBI, yeah. probably with um, help from a lot of different agencies, I assume. Yeah. But yeah, also another thing that happens, um, I think this happened with uh, Alfie Black Cat. Yeah. That basically they say, oh, well, you took us down. Now we're going to be going after, there's no bars hold. We're going to yeah. go after everything. Yeah, which um, can be kind of scary because um, you know it's not as much a thing nowadays, but there is kind of the on- honor among thieves in uh, ransomware gangs. Yeah, um, but I do believe I also saw something with Lockbit that they had data on their server that they were saying they were deleting when people were paying the ransomware. So I suppose that honor among thieves wasn't really a thing with them anyway. No, probably not. And uh, they t- they have made a bit of a PR statement. They plan to upgrade their security infrastructure and switch to manually releasing decryptors and trial file decryption. So that's, if you get your stuff ransom, they're going to be manually sending you out decryptors once you pay for the ransom. How ethical. Yeah, very <laughs> nice of them, isn't it? Yeah. So they've, they've just did a little excerpt here. So due to the separation of the panel and greater decentralization, the absence of trial decrypts in automatic mode Maximum protection of decryptors for each company. The chance of hacking will be significantly reduced. And then that means hacking them. <laughs> it doesn't mean they're hacking other people. Yeah, no, it's, um, yeah, it is quite ironic how, you know, they're making PR statements about how they're taking their security seriously. So, it goes to show how ransomware is just a business. Um, pretty much. Yeah. Not going anywhere anytime soon. But hopefully Lockbit is, um, will be at bay for at least a period of time. I hope so. 
Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.